All in. All in. All in. All in. All in. To understand how two words, all in, turned a New York Giants season going nowhere into a trip to the Super Bowl, you got to go back to the night before Christmas Eve. The Giants were seven and seven, and they'd lost five of their last six. I think there's some empty graves out there that people were digging for the Giants. There was definitely something missing. That night at a player's chapel meeting, we had a young guy come in and speak. He delivered one of the most timely messages that I've had, uh, not only in my football career, but in my life. His name is John Paul Gonzalez, a ninth grade teacher and speaker in nearby Union City, New Jersey. He's friends with the Giants team chaplain who asked him to speak to the team. Were you nervous? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, you, you go in a room and you see like Eli Manning in the front row and then you see Justin Tuck and you see these guys and you're like, wow. Gonzalez turned out not to be just a teacher of kids. He turned out to be a teacher of giants. He kind of put everything in, into two words all in. He gave everyone poker chips, had everyone put their initials on the poker chip and advised us to keep it with us. When you have something that you feel can't be beat, you know, what do you do? Throw it all in. The next day, the Giants whipped the Jets 29 to 14. Hand off Bradshaw. He's gonna run right through a tackle. Touchdown, Giants. Afterwards, we was all in today. Um, went to chapel last night, and our speaker talked about all in. And today, you know, you could just tell the Giants were all in. And before you knew it, all in had worked its way all around the Giants' locker room. It's just some something that became, you know, infectious. Wanting to give more effort, wanting to stay behind and watch more film. Ever since then, everybody, all 53 guys, 46 on game day, they're all in. The next week, they beat the Cowboys, punching their playoff ticket. The New York Giants are the NFC East champions. Then the chaplain again sent me a message and said, you wouldn't believe this, but they made towels for the game. It's not about uh, individual, it's just everybody being 100% dedicated to the team. Then they dismissed the Falcons at home in the first round of the playoffs, and a week later, they went into no less than Lambeau Field and shocked the 15-1 Packers. The New York Giants have eliminated the number one seed, Green Bay Packers. They're all in. The chip is the chip, but you know, it's our minds, you know, that are powerful. What's going to give you that extra edge? What's going to give you that extra push? And that's new since you, since you dedicated yourself to all in. You know, I, I don't think I was giving it 100%. I might have been giving it 90%. But now I think, you know, for the last five weeks, I've been definitely giving it 100%. The 49ers in San Francisco, the NFC title game, jackpot. The Giants in overtime have won the NFC championship. All the way down, you know, to the custodians, to the cooks that we have here within the facility. And when I say all in, I, I really mean they're all in. You came up with it. <laughs> Doesn't that feel great? It does, it does, but I, I know it's a lot of tribute to their hard work. If you win this Super Bowl, what will you do with the chip? I'll probably frame that chip, you know, in all honesty, and, and make sure I keep it by me, you know, at all times. I'll probably keep it next to my Super Bowl ring. Do you think you'll get a ring? <laughs> I wouldn't turn one down. <laughs> the greatest thing is when people make it a lifestyle. When it's not just another event. Because we go from event to event to event and yet we feel more empty inside than ever. See, when I talked to the Giants that night, people think I talked about football. I never talked about football. I walked in the room and I asked them one question towards the end of our talk. I said, what does it mean to be committed? Some guys said this and some guys said that. So I said, you know what guys, let's use an analogy. Maybe you can understand. You're playing the game of poker. If you take all your chips and you push them in the middle of the table, what does that mean? A player on the team at the time named Justin Tuck was there. And I remember he smiled. He was sitting in the back room. He said, well, if you push all your chips in the middle of the table, it means you're all in. You're ready to win. You're done going halfway. I said, okay. But what would happen if everyone shows their cards, but then you pull your chips back and you tell everyone you were just kidding? I remember he smiled even wider and said, well, if you're playing poker at my house, that's how you get punched in the face. <laughs> I said, Justin, you're right. So if we would never do it in a game of poker, why do we do it with our lives? Why do we say we're going to be committed to something when things get tough, when un the unexpected happens, we back away and say, it's not for me. So I gave him a chip that night. I gave him a marker. 
And I said, guys, there's nothing special about this chip. In fact, it's, it's from Walmart. <laughs> but take this chip, and if you mean business, you take this marker and you sign it. You put it someplace, you're going to see it every single day. And when you see it, you ask yourself the question, am I really giving my best, or am I just going halfway? Some guys took the chip and they put it in their locker and they said they, they would see it before they hit the field. They said it helped them play better, I guess. Other guys took it a little more personally and they said they took that chip and they were all in for the game of football, but they said they wanted to be more committed at home, so they put it in the middle of their kitchen table to be a more committed husband and father. One of the guys in the video, even Antrell, he played for the Chicago Bears last year. I remember he sent me the Twitter picture. He got the words all in tattooed on his chest. I said, Antrell, no one said to do that. <laughs> but he actually sent me one of the best replies I ever received. He said, for me, John Paul, if, uh, if all in is just about, well, if it was just about a t-shirt, well, I can put a t-shirt on and take it off whenever it looks good. But if I'm really committed, I'm committed even when things don't look good, when they look ugly, when they look difficult. I want to be reminded of that every time I look in the mirror, what commitment truly is. It's not something I can take off and put in the trash. See, that's what it's all about. It's about being committed inside of here. Not when the lights are on, not when the crowd is cheering, but what do we do when no one's watching? That's a lifestyle. That's not an event. See, the one question you might have in your mind is, John Paul, all that's great, but I still have one question. Why did the Giants call you up in the first place? They wanted a better motivational speaker. Tony Robbins has, a, has an office in New York. They wanted a better ninth grade teacher. I'm sure they could have found one. You're right, and you're right. Giants called me up because I went to jail. No, let's correct that. I was not personally in jail, okay? Saw some faces, but... See, when I came back from playing basketball in the NBA Summer League, I wanted to be personal. I wanted to make a difference in people's lives, and, well, I wanted to be a teacher. But I didn't know you need this thing called the teacher certificate. My college failed to tell me that, so I had to go back to college and get one. And as I was getting my teacher certificate, I went to the only place that would open their doors so I could help kids. Juvenile jails. I went to juvenile jails throughout my state, and I started tutoring. And after tutoring, then they found out I was a basketball player, so they asked if I would coach their basketball program. I said, sure, and they said, oh, this is great. It'll be like the movie The Gridiron Gang, and you kind of look like The Rock, so this is perfect. And I said, I'll give it a try, and they said, well, we're, we're going to buy jerseys for the kids. Um, what do you want on the jerseys? These kids have, you know, these kids have made some, are pretty bad, and they've made their, their, their mistakes, and you got to have a tough name. I said, first of all, I don't believe you're a mistake. You can make a mistake, but you're not born a mistake. And I said, if you let me coach the team, I only want two words on our jerseys. And these are the jerseys that that we wear in jail to this day. And this is the word on the front. See, I believe this is the best thing you can play for and live for. There's a movie I enjoy a lot. You may have seen it. It's called The Shawshank Redemption. There's a quote at the end of that movie that says, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and a good thing never dies. It's true. See, the greatest thing is when you give somebody hope because they see you live a life of commitment and that you're all in. This is our reverse side and we have to change colors. When you give somebody hope, they believe they can have this, a future. You don't personally have to go to juvenile jails and wear these jerseys and play with us on, on Wednesdays. I personally believe we all have the opportunity to wear this type of jersey every single day. See, when we walk into our homes, do we give hope? Or do we take it away because the power of the tongue has the ability to do both? Do we give others on our team, in our school, the ability that they can be greater than us, a future? Or do we dash that too? See, like I said before I hung up the phone, I asked the Giants, why did you call me? And they said, well, you wouldn't believe it, but we didn't hear about you from YouTube and we didn't hear about you because you're a teacher. We heard about you because you went and you worked with kids in jail and 
We thought it'd be great for the guys to know about that. See, I didn't get to talk to Elon Manning and Victor Cruz because I sent them my resume 20 times. I guess I got to do it because I decided I wanted to be all in for the least of these. And then I got to do it for the greatest. If you question, what should I be all in for? Don't start at the top. Everybody wants to get to the top. Start at the bottom. Be committed to the ones no one wants to be committed for. And pretty soon, I think you'll be up here telling your story. God bless you guys. Thank you for your time. <laughs>